Brand new emblem. Use it on twitch.tv slash evanf1997. It should be out by the time you see this video. May 28th is the release date. Just join the stream, have the extension connected to your Bungie account, gift two subs, enjoy the emblem and a bunch of other materials. Destiny is known for many things. To some, the game is known as the PvE PvP shooter. To others, the game is known for its seasonal storytelling in a yearly release cycle. For the people who feel hurt by it, it's known as the dead game that still finds a way to survive. But to its most hardcore and dedicated players, the game is known as home. If you've followed my channel, you know that this game has been my home for the better part of three years, almost four at this point. And these types of videos get me excited every single time. It's great to see you. We have fishing. We have some underwater adventures. We have a whole boat of stories left to reel in and feed you. And we even have some new games on the horizon that will be PvP to the PvE with Marathon. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because you're in for an amazing time. So sink into that seat and get comfy for the brand new dungeon to Destiny, Ghosts of the Deep. I am Evan F1997, sometimes Evan explains, and I am here to ask you a question. Is a player not entitled to the loot of their dungeon? No, says the woman at Eververse. It belongs to the store. No, says the man who died in that uh, sunset story. It belongs to the orb in the sky. No, says the casual with 10 wives, 18 kids, and five jobs. It belongs to everyone. I rejected those answers. Instead, I chose something different. I chose the impossible. I chose... Ghost of the Deep. A city where the speedrunner would not fear the patch. Where the solo player would not be bound by petty nerfs. Where the story... And now... We go down to the fishing lagoon to check in on what the Gamer Subs boys are doing. Alright boys, I got myself a big one! Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Get it in! Don't get the boat! Oh my god! Oh my god! What? It's an exotic lemonade! Partner, I tell you! Well need doggy partner! Looks like we got ourselves a lemonade! And a waifu cup. Use code Evan at checkout. Now, be gone. Can't be free. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, would you kindly use code Evan at checkout? Yo, is there gonna be a cut? Okay. I ain't skipping this for watching it. Sorry. Woo! Thirty frames. Although the raid ones are sixty. Yeah. What, what the fuck? <laughs> what the? There's a tank. Wait, we actually get to go down here? I guess. Oh, shit, dude. Let's okay. go. We're actually in there. All right. Let's see what this is about, guys. Yep, skipping that. <laughs> no. My lord. Welcome to the deep, or should I say the arcology of Titan? Players will remember this area from the mission in the Red War campaign featuring this big yellow tank. And for this encounter, if you hit these levers in the correct order, you can bring this tank back too. Bungie aren't strangers to hidden tanks. In Halo, they have done this as well. And even in the Scourge of the Past raid, there was a tank. The first encounter takes place where you always wanted to go in the Red War, looking down onto the beach of Titan's seemingly lower city. Breaking the ritual is a pretty straightforward encounter. Kill ogres, follow the trail, which should look familiar if you did Wrathborn hunts in the season of the hunt, but this time they are to three different locations, with the final having a Lucent Hive to kill. Wait, what are these guys doing here? After this, head back to the middle ritual, kill a wizard, and access deep sight, and then back to your matching symbol. Now do this four, not three, four times, and you're done. the game. Wow. wow. Good job, Sam. I uh, actually, okay. Yeah, I there yeah, we go. See, that charges it. Yeah. Okay. Ritual statue manifest. Okay. So it's Easy. Easy. Murder. This one. All right, we're done. Yep. Oh. All right, so it's four. Four. 
Now you may have some questions. Why are the light hive here? Why are we here? And what does this mean? Well, the thing I've loved about dungeons is audio logs telling us future plans, or at least through story, the environment and collectibles telling the story instead of characters just sort of standing there and just talking every week. This time, the collectibles are a little familiar for taking King players, as calcified fragments are the memory collectibles. Zebu Wrath, voiced by Kimberly Brooks, has some very powerful words to say. Lonely Navigator, we have traveled so long with only each other. I know you love to hear and speak new tongues. Come, sit in the flesh garden. I will read you these stories I bought at Kaharn. Zivu is referring to someone as Navigator, which is Oryx's nickname, but why? It's like Zivu is calling out to him not knowing he was already killed and yeeted into space. Along the way to the next portions of the dungeon, players will find even more audio logs. I was zero. I was weakness, fragility. Then you drowned me in the deep, murdered my flaws. You are our navigator, our guide. Led me down the bladed path to be reforged as Zivu Arath. I will remember you, our navigator, our brother, our king. In this, you are eternal. I remember the languid contempt of our father, the cold eyes of our mother. I see your determination eternal. It is determination that defines you. Certainty, clarity, faith. Your will is a knife hewing away at our lies. You are truth. When I doubt, you never spare me the blade. When I falter, you never spare me your words. And yet, I know there is more. It's like Zebu is now aware of Oryx's death, mourning what he meant to her, bragging about what he did for the three and the creation of the Hive, maybe even blinded by rage that she ignores a lot of the Hive's messy creation. Or maybe she just doesn't know. Maybe she chooses to ignore it. You are dead. Your throne waits empty. Blasphemy. Blasphemy! My brother, my brother is vanquished. Court scattered. Temples ransacked. My brother is dead, and his killers have not assumed the mantle of the Taken King. Blasphemy! Blasphemy! How? How can the spear that pierced a million worlds be killed by those who would deny the all-edged truths? Mother, are you laughing? Sister, are you smiling? Worst of extinction was it all for nothing. Kimberly Brooks delivers a perfect voice acting for somebody who's just filled with blind rage. Not only is Zivu filled with this blind rage, but she does bring up something downright insane. Zivu Arath talks about us ignoring the idea of becoming the new Taken King. All the way since the Taken King DLC, Oryx's throne has been left untouched. And characters have brought this up in the past, but with how she sounds, I think the Taken Queen could be a real idea. To pull it back a little bit, remember what I said about the underwater sections and the seasonal activity needing to be pushed harder? More panic of dying, the tighter spaces, maybe even shared bubbles to refresh it with larger environments? Well, it looks like the seasonal activity isn't what Bungie had in mind for the real water sections, or I guess methane since we're here on Titan. I need a bubble, I need a bubble, need I need a bubble. A bubble. Get back, get back, get back. Got it, got it! <gasps> I can't move. Okay, I need a one. If we have to do an encounter underwater, I'm leaving. Wait, no, I'm dead. <laughs> Help! Hey, I'm grabbing this bubble. Help! Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. I need this one so bad. Yeah, come Please. on, hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. This very long water section will have you wanting to meet Andrew Ryan. 
Hell, maybe this is a Disney collab for The Little Mermaid. Maybe we're in Subnautica. This section is massive, filled with bubbles to grab, fans to jump up, and some fun to be had. Funny enough, for those who want to move fast through here and don't like being restricted by the speed parameters, you can eager edge and use the super button to keep your sword swiping. You can also skate through some areas, but it's a bit less consistent on where you're gonna land. There's a hidden chest close to the next encounter, but the real appeal here is just looking at the beauty of the environment and working through this falling puzzle to get through. On the way, Zebu Arath had some more to tell. I have died, and yet was summoned back by you. You who remembered me as war. Our sister died and was summoned back by you. You who conspired with her cunning. So it must be for now. If your legacy is true, brother, it will come unto us and defeat our blasphemy. And if not, if not, what we attempt cannot be blasphemy. For we have survived you, surpassed the power of your will. This one is unbelievably juicy, and there's a lot to peel back. So I believe Zebu is talking about Oryx bringing her back to life, which is a bit ironic since he uh, beheaded her to gain strength to kill Akko, the worm god, which gave Oryx the ability to take, thus making the Taken. For my lore people, we're going to need your help to break this down more, but to my understanding, Oryx's act of war against the Ecumen Council brought Zebu a wrath back from the enemy's ashes, and the siblings once more fought side by side. Then, Oryx convinced the Dachau Nest, I hope I said that right, that he was jealous of Zebu Arath, and wanted their help to destroy her, but he set a trap for their forces and slew them. From their ashes, Savathun rose in an act of cunning committed by her brother. What this means is that although Savathun and Zebu Arath died a true death, it was not their final death because it was in their brother's throne world, not their own. Still, a true death meant they need an extensive amount of time to come back to life and regain strength, which Oryx bypassed by committing acts that were true to his sister's natures at the time. But we have the Light Hive here, and you guys know how Savathun's story went. Savathun can't be in control of these Light Hive, so it means that maybe somehow or some way, Zebu Arath has the light. She talks about blasphemy here too, which is where necromancers can basically cheat death, but it's shamed even within the hive. She sounded desperate here, so what is she cooking up? Also, if you're curious, ayat in hive means what is at war is healthy, what is at peace is sick. So she's willing to go any lengths to make sure she wins, and goddamn, Zebu Arath is an exciting villain, and I think Kimberly Brooks delivers an amazing performance here. The sky! is fragile, flawed, lies, lies. I see how easily it is chained, brought to the heel and muzzled. The truth cannot so easily be bound. You showed us that truth has wings. I take flight in your stead. I bring the knife of truth to the gristle of lies. Now, I want you to think. If Zebu wants to bring truth to the gristle of lies, who could she be talking about? Who is the biggest character of lies? There's only one other, and one that might be needed to fight her sister. What a 180 it would be if players who hated Savathun and fought her in the Witch Queen were fighting with Savathun's help to defeat Zebu Arath's evil, the Clegane Bowl of destiny for my Game of Thrones fans. You would have savored my triumph. How our sister's gift to me was treated with such care. Screams like a choir as their mountains trembled. Screams like a choir as their seas boiled. I stepped down into that world thrust my sword into the heart of Torabottle and carved lies from truth. If you didn't know, 
Zevio Wrath began the invasion of Torah battle. The Cabal homeworld by corrupting a lead Cabal commander into thinking Hive magic could be harnessed and mastered. The commander became a possessed vessel for the invasion, and this is why Kaido met players back in Season of the Chosen after fleeing Torah battle. Heresy! Heresy! Our sister denies your truth and crawls like an animal into the shadow of the sky! She bleeds and howls, allowing herself to be profaned by it. She spits on your memory. Sister, you always doubt it. But now it is time to test theory and praxis. As far as I know, Praxis with a K was the boss in Revision Zero's mission, who was originally in Air Miss's army in the Beyond Light campaign. But Praxis was resurrected and under the control of Zebu Arath in that mission. Could she be referring to this Praxis? Or is Praxis with an X here someone or something else? Maybe it's just a typo. Either way, she is pissed at Savathun and bloodthirsty. Sometimes to win a battle, you needn't raise a hand. You let the ignorant fight in your name, unknowing. They move themselves into position, posturing their victories, leaving their soft flank open. Sister, I spit on your grave. You were wrong. There is an end in sight now. Clearer than I have ever seen it. The horizon narrows down to a single edge, sharper than hope. I see the final shape coming into focus in this cutting motion, and the deep sings its promises. I crack my whip unto the rhythm. I guide your knife in between ribs. Even now, alone, you are my navigator. The final shape. Perhaps the final battle for Zebu Arath and Savathun's inevitable showdown. Zebu is truly alone, and that feeling has only enraged her more. Uh, freaking wait, there's one down here. Holy run, go away. There's one what? <laughs> wait. Oh! Look at um wait, what is that on the oh, left? Bubble uh, is that A light barrel high? Is there a library behind the shooting at y'all? Yeah, there's a library behind the Oh! <laughs> I need oxygen, like, now, by oh, the way. Oh, it's in the water, you know! <laughs> the boss is under here, bro! Hebo! What? Through it down there's there. a hive guardian down here! Like a shark in the water, this lucent hive, Ekthar, which is always funny to say, chased you down and was the first boss of the dungeon. Ekthar <laughs> sounds a little familiar, and Destiny veterans might know the original one from this. Their leaders belong to you. He was the Sword of Oryx who you met and killed originally from the original Sword quest back in the Taken King. He is back and under methane. This encounter has you killing knights and ogres, then grabbing deep sight to determine where to go next. The symbols are under methane as well, so you need to jump down and grab them on the walls. Once the runes have been grabbed, three light hive wizards on all three sides will spawn. You need to kill them and then bank the charges into the three thrall statues. This spawns in a knight who drops a pool to break the shield on <laughs> Ekthar and fight him at sword range. Fun fact, you can instantly break the shield with Arbalist, but it seems the Legend of Acrius is the best for this boss kill. After a dogfight, Ekthar, dude, why is his name Ekthar? Our first boss had to go down. Surely. There we go. Good work, boys. Good stuff. Dude, imagine you don't finish the f***ing ghost. You have to do the whole encounter over. Oh my god. Oh, that would be hilarious.
I can't confirm if he comes back with the full health bar if you let his ghost respawn, but I imagine if someone let this happen, it would be pretty damn funny. After this section, there is more diving and a James Cameron Worldwide Phenomena Avatar 2, which is just a live action anime. Okay, fine. It's not James Cameron's epic movie Avatar 2. A little fishy. It's a big fish. The behemoths out here. Yeah. It's Asa, the iron lung leviathan that you see in the season under the methane ocean. Still a beautiful shot, and of course, there's some more dialogue from Zebu Arath. These liars are eloquent in their tenacity. They make me doubt my own hand, my own right. Our bleeds clash, and I am driven back, back. I had my blade in their throat, and they slipped past my guard! But it is too late now. Even their deepest cuts are too shallow to kill. I see the final shape coming for their heart! I'm actually not sure what Zebu is referring to here. Is it us defeating her? Us breaking through Titan? Maybe she's referring to this season. Who knows? Either way, there is one more audio log, but not before we find this other chest and take a trip through a throne world ship to the final boss. Zebu Arath would do anything to bring war down on her enemies, even enacting blasphemy. But as she says, I ought. I ought. Zebu Arath has a master plan in the depths of Titan, but you weren't going to let that happen. Oh, what the fuck? That is uh, our Taken King big. is now the Sunken King. It's literally Oryx's head. <laughs> That's literally, this is... Yeah. Oh, sh... Oh, his entire God. body, like his chest is there too. I, I, guys, look who's behind us! It's f***ing Big Daddy himself! Are you? Oh, sh It's f Oryx! Oh, rip bozo. <laughs> rip bozo. Who but a necromancer, one from the strange terrain, working under Nakris, named Simuma, or Nakru, would resurrect something from the dead. And resurrected was the hive god Oryx. Or he would have been, if you didn't put a stop to this. Or Nakru was trying to use the Lucent Hive power combined with necromancy to enact blasphemy and bring back the Taken King into the Lucent Taken King. Remember this? Well, he flew pretty far. Oryx somehow fell all the way down to the depths of Titan in this arena for a final showdown. And what an arena it is. Supported by a remix of the score of Regicide, you are here to put a stop to this. This encounter features another throwback enemy named Vorlog. You don't remember Vorlog? Well, he's from the Court of Oryx. You need to kill him while standing in one of three body parts marked with Deep Sight. You have both hands, the head, the heart, a knee, and a foot. Three of these in a triangle are needed. When Vorlog dies each time, you need to look through the Hive Circle and shoot the Taken King symbol, which is a really fun mechanic relying on positioning and perspective. Once all three Vorlogs are dead, you need to run into the methane waters and into rooms with a Lucent Hive Wizard, Acolyte, or Knight, and then coordinate the symbols above their heads. Using the information, you then grab Deep Sight again to get the ability to dunk the rune. This allows the boss shield to be shot down, again, Arbalist slaps for this, and then it's bake time. Or should I say it's moth time? Because Jesus Christ! Either way, players eventually got the win. No, 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 kill the ghost. Up top, up top. Oh, nice. I, I think it's, I think cool. it's like plate related. Like she goes to each one for a certain amount of time. Get the finisher. Yeah. Get the finisher. Uh, oh God, dude, I didn't even see there was a finisher. Can you imagine? Ooh. Finisher. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was it. Oh, was everything. Okay. Nice. And just like that, Sloan has some words 
and it's over. Or so you'd think. You see, after the boss fight, if you go behind the boss arena and into the Acolyte Light Hive room, you will see another hive ring to shoot through. Shooting this unlocks the final hidden room with the final audio log. I come to you now to say goodbye, brother. This will be my last visitation. A final knee at your grave. I'm left to wonder if there's anything of you still in there. I am left to wonder, what is this feeling? The sky is mortally wounded, bleeding out. Yet, a part of me longs for the comfort of the gardens, of your stories, of sisters. I long for our journeys together. But no, they have come to an end. We will be proven right. You will be proven right. Brother, if you have taught me anything, it was to never deny a truth, even when it grieves us. What is this feeling? I do not want it. That feeling, Zivu? Yeah, that's vengeance. Something in the w Oh, hey, let's talk about the loot. Ghosts of the Deep has some of the best loot I have ever seen in a dungeon. First, look at the armor sets. Okay, wait, now look at the armor sets. Light Hive Badass Armor, check. Seriously, this is some of the best armor I have seen in Destiny. And it shades so damn well. And it's animated too. I love when they do this. Weapons, well, let's have a look at the origin trait. Reviving allies or defeating combatants with finishers reloads this weapon and readies an emergency reload for the next time the weapon runs out of ammo. An emergency reload is auto-filling the mag. Now let's think about the fact there is a rocket that has the perk Envious Assassin and Explosive Light in combination giving you three in the mag. You can do a finisher to reload and then have an emergency reload just to lace everything up. And the clips of this are insane. But one piece of credit I can give to all these weapons is they kind of look like marathon weapons. I like the reference. This one is solar and it can roll with incandescent and demolitionist, but for PVP players, it can even roll with target lock. There's a harpoon glaive. Yes, you heard that right. A harpoon glaive that can get opening shot on it. And the first ever stasis wave frame grenade launcher. And that gets me excited. Finally, there is this exotic trace rifle, the navigator. Wait. Did Oryx get turned into another exotic? That's the funniest thing I've ever- This trace works on allies and enemies and synergizes very, very well. This apparently even has a secret perk too. And one thing that I noticed is you get Woven Mel when you proc the Sever, which does not say in either the main perk or the exotic perk. There is even an exotic catalyst that has a boss named Thule R, who is from the Will of a Thousand Strike on Mars in Destiny 2, but this time, you know, is, you know. The catalyst for this trace rifle adds a special reload that you can shoot a grapple point, so it's fun for strand users. But I think with that new Warlock exotic helmet that is already insane, but looks yeah, this will be even more support for your teammates, so I know that I'll main this one. So, that leaves us with one last thing to talk about. What does this dungeon mean, and what are my thoughts on the quality? First things first, the dungeon is clearly in the same vein as Duality, adding mechanics in a new environment, teasing the future of the game. We learned through Duality that Kallus was the main antagonist, and that is where we got to understand the motivations and deal with what was realistically the best callus we would get. For Ghost of the Deep, we get to understand Zivu and exactly where we're headed. And I don't think this is going to be the best Zivu we will get. I think Zivu will be a fantastic character. Savathun vs. Zivu, the final shape, an end and all out end game war for Light vs. Dark and I couldn't be more excited. My opinion on this dungeon is that it's probably the best dungeon since Duality, 
and the most complete since Prophecy, maybe since Shattered Throne. Both boss encounters are amazing with mechanics that feel satisfying to farm, and I've always loved the Light Hive. I've missed fighting them, and having Zebu take control of them in the absence of Savathun was a great idea. The first encounter is just, oh, it's not fun at all and I'm sick of the introduction encounters to the mechanics. Just throw me in there. I can adapt. I think players can adapt to just jumping right into a boss fight without all these boring intro mechanics. And please stop using four phases. Nobody likes fours. The methane ocean is cool, but man, does it drag with without proper speed tech or a checkpoint. I like the visuals and the journey of getting lore as much as the next guy, but 10 minutes of slowly walking around the ocean is way too much. But maybe I'm also not who they're catering this towards either. But I also want to say that if a dungeon is farmable, who is this catered towards? And not just that first time experience. I also think that the solo will be based on user experience, and over time it will get a lot easier with the right mods in the works. Overall, I am a huge fan of this dungeon, and I think I'm biased because Bioshock was my favorite game for a long time, hence the intro. I think that this makes me interested in what Bungie has going on in the endgame too, but I also want to see them push the dungeon format of two bosses and one non-boss encounter way past this. I feel like this is a perfect example of treading water and not innovating a ton. The game has felt this way for a while, and while I love this dungeon, I do think that some big finale is due for this game. Now, would you kindly like and subscribe? I'll see you next time. Enjoy some bloopers. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of collapse in front of me. Do you know who that is? Who is this? Is it uh, no, it's a hammer sandwich. Uh, bro, who's it look like? Bro, can I stop that figuring? What? <gasps>